Welcome to statistics, the main vocabulary. In the next three videos, we're going to take a look at mostly terms and keywords used in statistics. And a lot of students kind of worry about trying to memorize all these. And my suggestion is that through the course of the semester, you will use a lot of these words to the point where you're going to know their definitions without having to come back to these videos and look them up. Some of them you're probably familiar with already maybe from another basic statistics class you may have taken in high school, or perhaps just from daily usage. So let's begin, and please take notes, and feel free to stop the video at any time if you want to write down what's on the screen and then listen to me reading it, or just giving you maybe a little bit extra information about the definitions. All right, so what is the science of statistics? The science of statistics is the collection, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data. This course is going to dip our toe into statistics and kind of get us into some of the um, basic and somewhat advanced concepts. Um, data is the actual values of any variable. And if you have a singular piece of data, that's called datum. Don't hear that too often. What is descriptive statistics? Now, descriptive statistics is the organizing and summarizing of data. In fact, chapter two in our first unit here in our statistics class will be all about descriptive statistics. We'll be making frequency histograms, stem and leaf plots, frequency, relative frequency polygon, and among others in unit two. So what is inferential statistics? Well, that's using probability to determine how confident we can be that our conclusions are correct. This is pretty great stuff because what we can do with inferential statistics is take a small group of representative data and extrapolate how the whole population can actually be based on that small representative sample. So this is how we can get a group of people to basically figure out how the entire state or nation is going to feel about something or vote on something. So this is the main power of statistics, is using inferential statistics. So whether descriptive, whereas descriptive statistics is going to be in chapter two, the rest of the chapters are going to be unpacking this power. So what is probability? Now probability is a mathematical tool to study randomness. Now, one thing I need to point out is that there is a cool proportion of how we deal with this probability. The proportion is based on what you desire over the total number of possibilities. What's great about this is that you can use this to figure out the percentage that something is going to happen. Like you desire that one winning lottery ticket, but there might be 10 million possibilities. So the chance of winning that is pretty small. But if you're spinning the wheel on the price is right and you want that dollar space, you want the one dollar space out of the 20 spaces on the big wheel. So that your chances of getting that is 5% or one out of 20. We will be dealing a lot with probability in chapter three. So we're going to move on to what is a population. A population, and you heard me use this before, a population is the collection of persons, things, or objects under study. Now to contrast a population, it's important to talk about a sample. A sample is to collect a portion or a subset of the larger population and study that portion, the sample, to gain information about the population. It's hard to talk about population without talking about sample. So here's an example. Let's suppose that you are a beer company and you want to see if your microbrew is going to be popular in the city that you want to sell it in because you don't plan on international distribution or national distribution. So what you do is you go to a bar or restaurant that you feel 
is a sample of your city's population. You have to make sure that the people who go to this bar are representative of the people in the entire city who you expect to purchase your drink. So you test your sample with your microbrew and then you can make conclusions based on the population. And that's pretty powerful. That way you don't have to actually go to every single beer drinker, those who would want to consume your beverage in the city that you're looking at, you can just look at the sample. And then using your inferential statistics, you can figure out how likely is your findings going to be correct? Is it gonna be 99% correct, 95 or 90% correct? And how likely is it to be true? So that's the power of statistics, is to take a small group and extrapolate that to a larger group without doing all of the work to get every single data point in the larger group. So a statistic is just a property of that sample. Maybe someone who liked it or didn't like it. Or maybe you were asking for a rating system. <laughs> now we can talk about kinds of uh, getting kinds of samples and statistics, but we'll talk about more of that in a later video or later in this one. So let's talk about the difference between a statistic and a parameter. A lot of people use these interchangeably, but interchangeably, but there is a distinction between a statistic and a parameter. See, a statistic represents a property of the sample, and the parameter is a numerical characteristic of the whole population that can be estimated by the statistic. So with all those words there, and with you furiously copying them down if you're not um, pausing the video here, it still might not seem clear what's the difference between a statistic and a parameter. The parameter is seen as the more powerful data, or sorry, not data, more powerful representative value, such as an average of the parameter. Because you can have an average of the statistic, you can have an average of the sample and that would be just a statistic. So if you have the average of your small group, that's called a statistic. So let's go back to the uh, restaurant analogy. So if you went to that restaurant and you got the average positivity scores of your beverage, that would give you a statistic. Now, once you're able to run the calculations and data to extrapolate that to the entire population of the city that you're trying to survey, that would then be called a parameter. So an average can actually be a statistic or a parameter. It refers to the group that it's referring to. So that's the difference between these two. So when you do your homework in this section, be aware that the statistic and the parameter are really numerical values that describe either a sample or an entire population. So what's a variable? Now, obviously, a lot of the easy answers here, are like a variable is like the letter X. But a variable here um, is, to put it a little bit more um, specifically, is a characteristic or measurement that can be determined for each member of the population. Now, numerical and categorical variables, you may need to write this down because I didn't actually type this one in, but the numerical value is a, a number. You know, so if you wanted to know somebody's age, that would be pretty easy to write down numerically. Categorical is not numerical. So you can rate something as good, better, excellent. Sometimes we make surveys where people are not using numerical scales and they're using you know, qualitative uh, measurement systems. Categor categorical variables could be a color, if a color has a way to show likeness, like maybe the color of plants. There are different maybe ways to grade the greenness of plants, and that would show health or soil health. You can tell I did some gardening uh, recently. So that's the example of categorical. Okay, so this next problem similar to some of the exercises that you'll be doing from the book here is you're going to read a little story problem and then you're going to identify the population the sample the parameter the statistic and the variable and the data so 
What I would do and suggest is that you pause the video and write down population sample parameter statistic variable and data if you didn't copy the notes, or just pause the video and try to fill in based on this problem what these things would be. I would strongly recommend that you do statistic and parameter together because again, statistic is the number that represents the small group and the parameter is what represents the number that represents the whole group. So hopefully you've paused the video and you're ready for the reveal of the following answers. So the population in this group is going to be the ABC College this term. That's what you're trying to find out. You're trying to find out the information about the people who went to the whole college. But you're not going to interview everyone. You're going to randomly survey 100 first year students. Now, we're not here to critique whether this was representative or not, because this is definitely first year college students, so they may or may not be representative of the entire college, but this is how things are done, and your critical eye may have kind of raised an eyebrow at that. Good job. Okay, so for parameter and statistic, we will do these together and note the small differences between the two. You'll see that the parameter is the average money spent by the first year students at the college. Whereas if you look at the statistic, it's word for word, except that it pertains to the students in the sample, not the whole first year colleges, first year students at this college. So maybe I should probably tweak my parameter. I'm now reading this a little bit. Probably it's a better idea to tweak that a little bit in the population because that makes a little bit more sense based on who we're surveying. The variable, you can assign x to be the amount of money spent, or you could have said just something about money being spent, and the data, data is the dollar amounts being spent. And this ends chapter one, section one, and you'll see how I will identify using this system here, identify chapter and section numbers. And I thank you for watching the first video of three for session one of statistics.